Ah. Erola Icon, how are you? You're mute, Raiko. Okay, um, can we start? Are we are we are we good? Yes. Yes. All good. Okay. Hello. Hello. So um, uh, we should start uh, right now because we have um, in the steering committee two German organizers and they, and they don't like uh, to be late. So it's our great pleasure today to uh, have uh, Maribel Fernandez and um, uh, Bruno Pinot uh, who are going to talk, uh, uh, to give a talk about uh, port graph writing. So it's a special type of uh, graph writing with uh, uh, various applications in mind from uh, biology to uh, social networks. Uh, I hope we will hear more about that. Um, so uh, Maribel Fernandez is a professor of computer science at the King's College in uh, London. Uh, and she's been developing, uh, uh, amongst uh, many other things, uh, podcraft writing uh, together with Hélène uh, uh, Kirchner. And uh, Bruno Pino is the lead developer of uh, the Porgy uh, tools uh, uh, that let users play with uh, uh, podcrafts. Um, so uh, today we'll start with uh, Maribel, uh, then we'll have um, a demo uh, by uh, Bruno Pino, and then back to Mar Maribel Fernandez for the, the remaining of the talk. Okay, so uh, let us start, Maribel. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction and thanks to the organizers for setting this up and for giving us this opportunity to talk about uh, porgraphy writing and about Porgy. Um, first of all, I want to, okay, little problem, okay. Um, I want to present the Porgy team because this, this tool has been developed uh, in collaboration by several people um, in Bordeaux, uh, at the University of Bordeaux and the INRIA and also in King's College London. And this slide mentions the, the main members of the team There has been also other people involved. Uh, we, have, we have been lucky enough to have uh, several interns. So there were internships and uh, master's thesis developed also uh, on, on this topic. And um, what we are going to try to present today is first of all, why we think um, using graph rewriting and this particular kind of graphs is interesting if we if we want to model systems. Um, we, we take the view that uh, the systems we want to model are, we want to model systems in, in many different domains. So we want some technique that would be generic enough and flexible enough so that we can, um, for example, model software because we are computer scientists and that's something that of course we're interested in, in modeling but also systems in other areas, for example, in biology or biochemistry, telecommunications, social networks, financial processes. Basically, we do, we do not fix a particular domain. We are trying to think of graph rewriting as, a, as I said, as a generic 
uh, tool for, for modeling systems, and specifically to model the dynamics of the systems. So we want to see how these systems evolve. So we are going to look at uh, the motivations for that, uh, and, and at Porgy in particular as one particular instance of using graph rewriting as a modeling tool. Um, Bruno is going to tell you more about the principles behind the design of Porgy as an interactive visual tool. And then after that, uh, after Bruno shows you a bit Porgy in action, I will talk a little bit more about the foundations of, of Porgy. So the use of Porg graphs and Porg graph rewriting, the use of strategies, because that's a very important component within Porgy, uh, the semantics of the rewriting we use. Uh, hopefully, if there are uh, if there is enough time, I can give you several examples in social networks and finance. And we will also want to talk a little bit about other tools that exist in, in this area um, and tell you a little bit of the future, future development. Um, so Bruno, would you like to take over now to talk about the motivations? Well, go on to the next slide because you, you already said everything. <laughs> Did I? OK. Is that that slide or the next? Yeah, no, no. This this slide. So I can I, I can go on now. So Maribel already told us about the um, our motivation. So it's to model basically complex systems, and we model uh, systems with a graph, of course, and we want a precise representation of the system. So there is nothing new. Everybody uh, do, is doing the same thing. And we want to understand how the system works. And basically, on a lower level, uh, we, are, we want to analyze heterogeneous changing and ambiguous data, and sometimes even large amount of data. Uh, Maribel already told you about some examples. So I will use a bioinformatics example. So I'm not from the bioinformatics community, nor from the uh, rewriting community. I am from the visualization community. And you will understand uh, quickly uh, why. Because in Porgy, uh, we mix graph rewriting and visualization. Uh, next slide, please, Maribel. So our challenge at the beginning, when about 12 years ago, when uh, Maribel uh, and uh, Hélène Kirchner went to see us here in Bordeaux, they said, OK, we, sh we can do something together to mix graph writing and visualization. And our aim was to build a generic and visual interactive platform to model a complex system. Um, uh, can I say this? Uh, want to simulate, of course, sorry, uh, the complex system and analyze the complex system. And during the simulation, we want to keep a trace of everything the user, uh, the, the data expert, uh, did with the system. So basically, in Porgy, you have two two big here, uh, the, the two the two boxes here. This is the two main parts. So the graph writing, we have, of course, rules to specify the dynamics of the system and a strategy language, as already said by Maribel, to guide the process of the transformation. Then on the visualization side, with Porgy, you can build a graphical model of uh, your system, and you can also observe and analyze the evolution of the system, but you, can, you analyzed it visually. And overall, the, what, we, what is for us a sort of a mantra is to understand how the global behavior of the system emerges, this is the important word, uh, verb, from a set of rules describing local modifications to be made. Uh, next, please, Maribel. So we have the traditional ingredients when you model a complex system. Uh, you are, it's, uh, there's nothing uh, in, really new here. So we have an initial state. For us, it's a graph. Some rewriting rules and a, a rule is also a graph. Then the strategy language. And the strategy language allows to, for instance, apply the rule in a specific on a or in a random order. You can iterate, uh, of course, until some condition is met. Uh, or you can use some non-deterministic choices uh, following um, based on 
what has just been done in the past. Uh, and you can also apply the rules or not apply the rules at some position. And I will, I will, I will show you this uh, in a minute. Okay, next. So the example I will use is an example uh, from biology. So I uh, just do a copy and paste the, the first five lines here of the slide. Uh, I do not understand this text, I am not a biologist. But in fact, what is important here is we have a protein interaction network. So this is a graph, each protein is a, a node or a group of nodes. So the proteins interact by binding or changing the state of their site. What is a site here? It's the small patch you see on top of each node. In Porgy, we call this port, a port. And edges can connect only nodes via their port. And the use of port is to add some properties. Here you see the properties are, are, ma are mapped on the color of the port. You can associate a property to the connection of an edge to a node. Okay, yes, that's, I, I do not have the control over the mouse. This is uh, why we use a port graph. It's because of this from uh, the biology. And so the rules say how we can change the state of a port or connect or add or remove nodes uh, to the graph. Okay, next, please, Maribel. So first, so I will show you a live demo uh, in a minute. So first, here, uh, this is two rules. Uh, so you have two rules with the left-hand side and the right-hand side, and the arrows in, in the middle. So the, which is the left and the right-hand side, uh, I hope it is very clear. And you can see what changed. The first rule on the left, for instance, is um, changing the, the state of some port and add a node which is called S here and remove an edge at the bottom. And the other rule, it's almost the same, but you see on the right, uh, red two uh, or one red edges. Yeah, in the, in the, under the hood, it's two edges, but uh, it's not very important here. So this edge, is, uh, is used to reconnect what we call the interface of the rule. Basically, when you are do, uh, applying a rewriting operation, we, we are seeking for a morphism of the left-hand side of the rule inside the graph. And then we change this uh, morphism by a morphism of the right-hand side of the graph. But of course, you may have some edges connected to your morphism, which are not part of the morphism. So you need to know how to reconnect them after rewriting. So th this is exactly the aim of this red edge. So you take all the edges connected to the S2 port of the left hand side. And then we said, so all edges connected to this port should, after rewriting, connected to this, uh, the, the port showing by Maribel with, his, uh, with her mouse on the left, the right hand side. And uh, here, the, the, the old rule, it, it's a graph. You have the left-hand side, it's a graph. The right-hand side, it's a, a graph or a subgraph. And if you have red edges, the old rule is also a graph. So in, in, in Porgy, everything is a graph. OK, so next, the demo is coming. So Porgy, it's an interactive environment. Which, which allows to uh, build your graph, your rules, your strategy, simulate the system, and analyze everything. So it's the, it is based on the Tulip platform. This is a, a, plat a framework we are developing in Bordeaux for now for more than 20 years. And uh, it's one of the top software for uh, visualization inside the international visualization community. And uh, inside Tulip, uh, everything is following the, what, we are, what we know as the visual, visual information seeking mantra. And this mantra says, overview first, zoom and filter, then details on demand. Usually in visualization, we are often working like this. And I will show you how uh, now. 
So I will share nice. my screen. Nice. Okay. Quick. So now you you should be able to see Porgy. Uh, sorry. Uh, just to the, the, the chat in case there's a problem. So in in Porgy you have first here the rules. So this is uh, exactly uh, the the port graph I showed you uh, two slides before or two slides ago. And uh, in this model, we have 14 rules. You can see them here. And uh, what I showed you is uh, rule uh, R8, for instance. This one is there. Then you have the set of graphs. So here I already applied many uh, rewriting. So we have a list of graphs. And here I showed you one. This is the starting graph, G0. And then we have the history mechanism uh, I told you, it, uh, which is called what we call a derivation tree. Applying a rule, uh, it's a derivation. And you, we keep all derivations. OK, and this is the overview first of the visual seeking mantra. We have the complete uh, here, uh, one which is quite large, a derivation tree. So a black edge, it's the application of a rule or the application of an atomic operation inside the strategy uh, you see at the bottom. I will explain you in a minute. And a green edge, it's the application of a strategy. The source of the green edge is the starting node of the strategy. And of course, the target, it's the final state of the strategy. And you can, to apply a strategy, you, you, you can just do the drag and drop. So I will not apply the strategy right now because it may take uh, a long time. But you, you, you take the strategy and I can uh, release my mouse, my mouse button, and the strategy will apply. You can do, of course, you can do also the same with a rule. You take a rule, and then I can try this one. Uh, I can apply the rule. Ah, OK, no problem. sorry. And the system is trying to apply the rule. OK, so I, I took rule R2 here, and this rule applied here only once on the state of the system. Oh, that's awful. Oh, sorry, that's a, a bug. My green edges are doing a silly stuff. So then from the overview, we, we want to study uh, inside our biomolecular uh, example. What is interesting for the experts is to follow this. So I will show you rule. Uh, it should be open. R6. OK. We are trying to follow the, um, the concentration of this protein, the S1, this one, the, the S protein. What is important here is to follow the creation of the S protein, because you see here, from this state, uh, the edge between e here, the C amp and the PKA is removed, and the, an S uh, node. OK, it's a, I don't know if it's a protein. Uh, OK, it's a biological stuff. And it's created. So to follow this one, we can for instance, uh, draw a scatter plot to follow uh, the, the concentration of the S protein a long time. And time here, it's the application of rules, and it's a depth of the tree. So with Tulip, I can easily select a branch of my derivation tree. So I will uh, select a part of a branch, it will be enough to have only a long part. OK. Oh. No, this is not I want. Uh, pass are directed. Select. Uh, OK. Yeah, the, the demo effect. I think you know this. OK, so this is the 
starting of my branch I'd like to analyze, then, okay, the end of my branch. So now I will say to Tulip, show me, no, oh, sorry. Uh, create new. So I want to see a scatter plot and count the number of S nodes. Okay, I want to see this in a scatter plot. And now I have my scatter plot. I can see what is interesting here is to see both visualization all together. So, and uh, what is really great with Tulip is that the, the nodes of the scatter plot are the nodes of the, deriv of the derivation tree. For instance, if I want to, uh, I say, okay, uh, this area, that's interesting. I want to see more about those states of the system. So let's select those nodes in the scatter plot. The selection immediately is done in the derivation tree. So I can now move, zoom. So you, you remember overview first, zoom and filter. So I have done some filtering here. I'm zooming and I can study this part of the derivation tree closer. I can, for instance, uh, check what I did here. So here I apply the rule R1. I don't know if you see in the G76, you have uh, a blue node on the left, which is connected in G77. This is what the... the zoom out, zoom out. A bit more, okay. Is it, is it better? Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, exactly the, the Schneiderman mantra of Zoom and Fever and details on demand. Here you have details. I can also see this branch uh, a bit closer. So I can also create a new visualization. Uh, now I can create a new visualization of uh, this. And uh, now we can see, for instance, uh, so, uh, what we call in visualization a small multiples. Yeah, so you can see that your graph uh, like a, a comic. I put you only one window. OK. So you see uh, the starting node, uh, what the starting state is interesting for me. Then here we apply the rule R6. So this is the morphism uh, of the left hand side of rule R6. Then here we move to the next state. And this is the morphism of the right hand side of R6 and so on. And uh, we can also have some animations, of course. And to finish with the demo, uh, Expose, I want this. Uh, another thing that, for instance, I what is it uh, was interesting, I told you that rule X R6 was the interesting rule because this is the only rule with creating the S uh, node. So I can ask Porgy to, to say that, show me uh, all application of rule X6, so a light in derivation tree. Ooh. Okay, oh. he, he, he is going to do it. <laughs> okay, you, you can highlight it. It, it was working uh, just a five minutes, just before the, the seminar. <laughs> okay, another demo effect. Uh, sorry. I have, sorry, I have a question. So uh, uh, that derivation tree is uh, is essentially uh, uh, are the traces that you get from the initial state? Yes. So it's uh, a trace of all uh, rule applications because you can apply rule uh, just one rule or all application of a strategy. Okay. Because uh, here the, 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 the tree is not branching a lot, so it seems that uh, uh, the rule are very cannot can can only be applied. In ah uh, no! In this in this one, I just applied the, the strategy uh, three times from uh, the beginning. It, it doesn't apply everything. It's only okay. following the strategy. Okay, thank okay. you. 
So Bruno, and maybe the, can explain. And the, the yeah, and, and this strategy, because of the one here, Marie Bell will explain you, uh, is only uh, developing one branch, not all. And the strategy here, I did not uh, talk about it, is randomly applying the 14 rules here following a probability distribution, which is, uh, in this case, computed uh, based on a Python uh, script. You can, of course, write directly the probability inside the strategy. And we repeat this ap random application of the strategy. We pick only one uh, possible application because if you say that, okay, let's apply rule five on the particular state of the model, rule five may apply more than one. So here we keep only one application and we repeat this uh, while it's working. So we so have two. Two questions uh, by uh, Daniel Merter, who is asking uh, whether it is always a tree or can it be uh, also a, a DAG? <laughs> it's a, basically, it's a DAG because you may have some uh, isomorphic state and uh, we are not building it as a DAG because uh, it's just a uh, direct application of the rule, but we can analyze, we did this kind of stuff in the past, we can analyze the the derivation tree and rewrite it as a graph by merging uh, isomorphic states altogether. And about uh, DPO and SPO, Marie Bell will tell you uh, in the rest of the seminar. Okay, I stop my sh screen sharing. Okay. And I have. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Yes. You're, you're doing the summary, Maribel? Yeah. Um, do, do you want to say anything else? Or you want to do the summary? No, no. It's, uh, it's up to you. No problem. OK. Um, so yeah, so I, I want to summarize briefly what we just saw in Porgy and then tell you a little bit what is the foundation for that. So you, you've seen that. Um, in Porgy, we, we always start from an initial graph, which represents the initial state of the system we are analyzing. Um, that in the theory that I will show you later, it's going to be a port graph, but it's a port graph that we call allocated port graph, because we can identify within that state, the area where we want to focus on. So we, we define the location where we are going to do the rewriting. And we also can specify areas of the graph that we do not want to touch, we don't want to rewrite. So we start with a located port graph. We apply transformation rules, which are port graph rewriting rules like Bruno showed, uh, but the, the rules are not applied in, in, in a random way. I mean, if we want, we can specify to apply them in a random way, but normally we can control them. So in Porgy, there is a, a window that Bruno showed you where we can write the strategy we want to use to control the rewriting. So actually the input for Porgy is what we call a strategic graph program. It's a graph, initial state, with a set of graph rewriting rules with a strategy. And what Porgy does is to build this derivation tree. And that's a really distinctive feature of Porgy. Um, it shows you the, the, the full trace of the rewriting and it allows you to interact with the tree. So you can zoom on particular states, you can, for example, ask um, to, to view the, the states that have something interesting for you. So maybe in the example that uh, Bruno showed is the existence of, the existence of this S node. Um, so we, we, we tried to, to have a tool where the, the important thing is not just the final state, but also the, the, the way, the, the behavior of the system that allowed us to reach that final state. Okay, so um, let me tell you now a little bit about then what is the, the, the foundation. So this notion of poor graph, poor graphs were introduced uh, by Oana Andre in her PhD thesis in 2007, but the idea of graphs with ports um, was there before because uh, it, it's something that arises quite naturally in many areas. So even when we connect our 
our systems. We, we, we talk about in which port we connect. Um, um, and in, in the case of biology, it also is quite naturally, they are called sites, but we map them to ports. And for example, if you study the lambda calculus or, or logic, there's a lot of work on using proof nets or interaction nets, which also talk about ports. So um, what we are doing now is to, to use a particular uh, definition of port graph, the, as I say, introduced by Oana, where we define a graph as a collection of nodes, which have ports attached to nodes. So we see them graphically uh, as a node with these um, points where edges attach. Edges then link to ports. And uh, in addition, we also consider attributes because since we are uh, trying to model systems and, and analyze data, um, data is also very important. So we, we have attributes for nodes, ports, and edges. And those attributes can be used also to guide the visualization uh, engine so that, for example, we can specify which color we want to use or which um, size or, or shape of nodes we want. But the, obviously the, the attributes could also give us important information about the system we are modeling, like for example, where a port is active or not, that could be reflected in the color red or green. So for us in Porgy, this notion of, of position in the graph is, is very important. It's a generalization of the notion of position in a, in a term, but a term is a tree. So here we had to, to generalize it in a position in a graph is, is, is just a subgraph. So for Porgy, each, each graph, each state in the system, um, it's, has two important subgraphs the position subgraph and the band subgraph. Um, you will see that the rules will only apply if there is a match that involves the position subgraph, but they do not apply if they are uh, superposing with the, the part that we said is band in the graph. Um, and when I say um, application of rules, what we are going to be doing is applying, um, checking for morphisms. So also within Porgy, the notion of morph graph morphism is very important. And what we are using is the standard uh, algorithm by Ullman. Okay, so Bruno also said this briefly that the rewrite rules we apply, the port graph rewriting rules are themselves also port graphs. So we see a, a rule as composed of a left-hand side, which is a port graph, a right-hand side that's also a port graph. So these subgraphs are port graphs. And in addition, there is an arrow node, which can also have edges connecting it to the left and the right. And we use these edges when we implement the rewriting because we are using a single push-out semantics where um, what we, we, we see is a morphism between the ports in the left and the ports in the right. And so if these two ports are linked with red edges, it means that this port in the left survives the reduction, it becomes this port. So anything that was connected to the port in the left, any edges connected to the port in the left when we rewrite will become attached to this port in the right. And um, if we don't have, uh, so, so we call these bridges in, in the terminology in, in Porgy, um, the arrow node can have bridge ports like these ones. It could also have what we call a black hole, which is an explicit way of uh, indicate which uh, ports will not, uh, so the edges connected to those ports will not survive. So for example, um, if we do not want to keep edges connected to this port after rewriting, we can connect this port to a black hole in the arrow node. In the single push out is simply by default. So if you do not map a port from the left to the right, it would automatically mean that anything connected to that port will disappear, will be del deleted. Um, here we just explicitly put it as a black hole port. We have an, another kind of port, but we are not going to use it in the example. So I'm not going to um, talk about it now. We call it wire. For more information, we, we can give you pointers later on. 
And also there are conditions that we can put in the rules in the graph. They are visually, um, we can see them here. For example, here, this condition means that this cross here means that to apply the rule, we cannot have an edge between these two ports. Okay. So it's a, a, a form of conditional rewriting. Um, so rewrite rules can also indicate modifi modifications on the position graph. So they are also located for graphs. So basically we can say that uh, when we rewrite, we want to put a particular node, we want to add it to the position subgraph or we want to ban it so that no more rewriting can happen in that node. Um, so the rule application operationally is, is the standard thing. You find a morphism from the left-hand side to the graph. Um, then the idea is to replace that uh, component, that subgraph by a copy of the right-hand side and rewire the edges, as I explained, using the information in the arrow node. Plus if the rule contains information to modify the position or the band subgraphs, we do it. And the main thing is that, as I said, we want to build derivations. So we want the reflexive transitive closure of the rewrite application uh, relation. Um, and we don't want just all the closure. We want to be selective as to which, which uh, applications we do. So we use strategies for that. Um, and a strategy is defined using uh, a, a particular language. I'm going to briefly show you the language, but formally what we have always is a pair consisting of a strategy expression that uses rules and the initial graph we want to rewrite with its position and band subgraphs. So the strategy language, again, don't, don't worry too much about this. It has standard constructs to iterate a rule. So iterate a strategy, a repeat or a while if you want to do it while some strategy is applicable. A strategy doesn't necessarily apply in a graph. It might be that you want to apply a rule and actually there is no morphism, no matching morphism. So a strategy could fail or could succeed. Um, what this language does is allows you to, to compose different strategies. The, the basic strategy is, is just coming from one rule. So if you have a rule, like here, this T is one rule, you can have a strategy that says all. So you mean that you want to try all the possible applications of that rule. And that's what causes the branching in the tree because the rule can apply in many different positions. Or you could tell Porgy to apply just one, once the rule, in which case, if you put one and the rule, Porgy will, will randomly apply the rule once. But you can, as I said, compose strategies sequentially. You can iterate them with a repeat or a while. You can do an or else, and if then else, or the strategy that Bruno showed had a pick, which is a way of saying, pick one of these strategies according to some probability distribution. The rest of the language allows you to, to select subgraphs to make your, your rule application. You can select them interactively, like Bruno was showing. You can interactively select the part of the graphs or the derivation tree you want to focus on, but you can also do it from the strategy language. You can um, define the position you want. You can set the position for rewriting. You can set the band graph, etc. Um, there are some, some uh, examples here. For example, as I said, strategies could fail. So if you do not want to see explicitly a fail failure, you can uh, define a try. And this is, again, is standard in, in all the strategy languages. If you do um, a strategy or else it, that means apply the strategy if you can. If the strategy is going to fail, then just output it, which is the it doesn't do anything. It leaves the graph as it is and it doesn't fail. Um, I have a little example for this. So for example, in, uh, this is a rule that we developed to model social networks to, to show how to create graphs, to generate graphs. Um, we have two rules that generate graphs from one node, this rule creates another node with a link. So in this case, there is a direction in the, in the edge but we, see, we can see this just as an attribute in the edge. Remember I told you we work with attributed graphs. 
and nodes, ports, and edges can have attributes. So this rule will create a node and put this um, edge, whereas this one creates a node and puts the edge in the other direction. And the strategy here just says uh, repeat, so iterate this n minus one times. And what, it, what we are repeating is this strategy that picks either the rule one or the rule two with equal probability. We can see here they both have probability 0 0.5. Um, this is a more complicated strategy, but this, this is just to show you that it is really a generalization of what we know from turn rewriting. So in turn rewriting, you can define, for example, innermost uh, strategy that always applies as deep as possible in the tree or outermost that applies a rule as closer to the root as possible. Here, um, because we have graphs, we can define the innermost and outermost strategies if we are dealing with trees because a tree is a particular kind of graph, but we can also define a generalization of the outermost strategy would be the strategy that, that rewrites at the interface of the, of the graph. And this is useful, for example, in some applications that we have to implement interaction nets and to compute interface normal forms. Um, so, so far we showed just the, the uh, graph and graph rewriting, but you already saw with the derivation tree that we have multi-level graphs. So the derivation tree is itself a graph where the nodes are graphs. Um, this notion, we have formalized it as an uh, attributed hierarchical port graph, where we have um, two main generalizations with respect to the notion of port graph. We have variables of type graph, and we have a, a function which we call ladder that allows us to nest graphs. So we can define, uh, so we call it ladder because we think of it as you have a node, but there is a ladder which allows you to go down and to see the graph um, that is attached to that node. Um, this is the, induct the inductive definition of an, a, a hierarchical port graph, uh, which again, maybe I, I'm not going to go through the technical details now, but it's, it's simply, again, this is a standard technique. You have at the level zero of the hierarchy, the flat port graphs. Uh, level one can have nodes that contain level zero graphs, etc. Um, and this is an example where we see here, for example, the node lambda two. This is an example that comes from the lambda calculus. Lambda abstractions um, have a body normally, and we represent this body in this case as a, uh, with a ladder. So you can see here the ladder, you come down from this node and you see the body of the lambda, which is another graph. In this case, it's a beta rule. So the body of the lambda is, is represented with a, a variable graph. This is an example from uh, finance where we have also a hierarchical rule where this node has this ladder graph. Okay, um, in, in a couple of words, just to want to give you an idea of the operational semantics of the strategy language. I don't think I have a lot of time because I want to give some examples too. So what we have defined is a small step operational semantics and uh, we looked at the, the properties of these small step semantics to make sure that we can always compute a result when it is possible to compute results for a graph. Our results have always the form ID or fail. That means that the strategy, when it's fully uh, computed, um, it should terminate on some ID or fail and the graph reduces to some other graph. Um, this small step semantics, we represent, we specify it in different ways. We have a um, structural view or an inductive definition of the, of the small step semantics, but we also have an abstract machine, a transition system, which is actually what uh, the implementation of Porgy is doing. Um, that transition system has configurations that consist of a derivation tree. So here we see this is really the main thing in Porgy. You have your derivation tree. Uh, the, the list of the nodes that are currently being developed, the list of the nodes that are already constructed, the, the results, and an auxiliary stack that we use for, to implement the, the rewrite relation. Um, I have slides giving the, the transition rules, but I think this is 
probably not interesting to show in the talk. I can give you a pointer again to, to uh, references for this. The important thing is that the abstract machine has the, the properties we expect. So it has a progress property. It doesn't get stuck if uh, the strategy can apply. Um, we have identified a sub-language that terminates is a sub-language of the strategy language that doesn't use loops. I mean, this is not very surprising. And we also proved that the normal forms um, in, end with uh, eat or fail in the strategy component. Um, the language is Turing complete. Again, this is not very surprising. We know that rewriting is Turing complete. We also have identified some sub-languages that are Turing complete. And now let me show you briefly a couple of examples. So the one on social networks, this one I, I already showed you, this slide. So it's a strategy to generate uh, networks. Um, the, the first two add the nodes, and these rules add connections between nodes. So here uh, it adds an edge between two nodes um, that we had already in the graph. And this one, when we have already one edge, it adds another. And we have a strategy that applies these generation rules to try to, to build um, a, a number of edges, uh, which we combine also with rules to build communities of nodes. Um, this, for example, says that if you have two friends, A and B and B and C, but A and C are not yet friends, you can add this uh, arrow here, etc. So we have rules to build these communities. And using these rules and this more complicated strategy, we build um, different kinds of, of networks that uh, have the properties that the in the papers of social, again, I'm not an expert in social networks, but the papers in, in, in this area describe the kind of networks that uh, are useful for this kind of area. So we can adapt our strategy to build that, the kind of networks that we want by selecting the, the right uh, strategies with the right number of applications in our nodes, in our graphs. And the second example is uh, from modeling um, financial, a financial process. So this is um, what I, I'm showing you in this slide is taken from a paper by Anand Kirman and Marsili, who studied the financial crisis in 2008, um, and specifically something that is called the rational negligence, negligence theory. It's a theory that uh, says that during the, that time before the financial crisis, um, the way that assets were traded uh, was of obviously trying to maximize profit and to maximize profit, the people trading these assets could be diligent or negligent. And they, they, there is a, a formula to decide whether it is better to be negligent or better to be diligent. To be diligent means that before you buy some asset, so these asset-backed securities are built from uh, loans. So banks uh, loan, have loans, mortgages, etc., and they exchange those products based on those uh, loans. And the buyer could check whether what they are buying is uh, a solid asset or it's a toxic asset, uh, but checking it has a cost. So obviously, if they know that they will be able to sell it anyway, they prefer not to check it. So there is a formula studied by these people here that says whether it is more profitable to be negligent or not, depending on the, um, the cost of the diligence check and also what is the percep perception of the market, whether they believe that everybody is going to be diligent or not. And according to, to this theory, we, what we did is we modeled it in a visual way by starting with a graph uh, with one asset and many banks. Uh, in the theory that they developed, they showed that it doesn't matter how many assets we put to start with. So we have only one at the beginning. And then we have rules that model that uh, process that I told you. So we have a bank that owns an asset and there is a potential buyer that wants to buy that asset. 
And then we have a, a formula that reflects the, the formula that I showed you. So the potential buyer can decide whether to be diligent or negligent, depending on what they perceive is the market behavior, what they think is the probability of toxicity and what the cost of the diligence check is. So they do this calculation, this node theta that appears here will tell what the, the right behavior is to maximize prop, profit. They might decide to follow the negligence rule or not. Uh, and in this model, if we, we, we create an, a, a node follow just to visually see if this uh, agent is going to follow the negligence rule or not. And each time a bank changes its behavior. So if it used to be diligent, but now it's going to be negligent or vice versa, we have a node uh, change. So that uh, when we follow, when we apply our strategy and see the derivation tree, the branch, we can plot the, for example, the number of changes of behavior, the number of diligent banks, the number of um, negligent banks, and we, we made some experiments which confirmed what the paper by Anand uh, and, and the, the co-authors showed that uh, even with high toxicity, which was the situation in 2008, the system reaches a negligent equilibrium where all the agents are negligent in some cases, for example, when the majority of the agents are negligent. So this is what was happening in 2008. The majority of the agents were being negligent because that was the most profitable rule. And therefore, um, even though the assets were toxic, toxic uh, they were not doing diligence checks. So we made some experiments here and these are the scatter plots like uh, Bruno was showing you, but for this example. Okay, so let me summarize. Um, I think I, I already mentioned these features in Por Porgy. The idea was to be able, let's say, to visualize the reductions, not just to see the final state, but to be able to see the whole trace. Um, we have a language of strategy that is heavily inspired from the languages that were developed for trees. Um, there's a, a paper by uh, Ellen and Claude Kirchner from 2008 that describes the, the view of strategies um, as, a, as a mechanism to generate just the part of the tree you want. So you can define a strategy as a subtree or like we do the strategy as an expression that allows you to compute the part of the tree you, you are interested in, in computing. Um, we also um, got inspiration from uh, Elan, which was a, a, a language, th this language Elan uses terms, not graphs. Uh, so the, strat the notion of strategy there is a little bit different because in a tree you can talk about um, the direction of the rewriting being, you know, going to the subterms, to the leaves, or uh, so outermost or innermost, which we replicated in Porgy with the notion of position. So we took some inspiration from Elan, which was developed in non C. Uh, again, by uh, Ellen's group around 2001. Stratego, a language was also developed around 2001. Tom, Tom is a version of Java with strategies. Uh, Mod, which is um, this, we are referring here to a paper in 2008, but there are very recent papers where uh, you can find about the strategy language. Mod has a very sophisticated strategy language. They, all, all these languages share some basic uh, features like the, the basic strategies are always success and failure. And they all have sequences, they have some kind of choice or else, and then composition of strategies, often with some form of iteration construct. So these are, as I say, languages for term, uh, strategy languages for term rewriting. There's also graph, graph transformation languages that have some form of strategies. For example, you can find strategies in Progress, IgG, Fujava, all the languages that are mentioned here have also strategies. However, they are in general um, domain specific. So they target uh, a, a particular domain and they are very well tuned with very good uh, strategies for those domains. The approach in, in Porgy was to keep the language generic. So um, that means 
that we can use Porgy in different domains, the, the price to pay is that our strategy language might not be so, um, it might not be so simple to use it for a specific domain. Um, on this topic, the, I, I should say that GP, on the other hand, it is a gener, general um, graph-based programming language with strategies. So this is not specific for a particular domain. So GP is more in the spirit of Porgy. Uh, however, it, it, there is one difference, which is the, the, the interactive uh, view and the developing of the, of the derivation tree. Um, GP is, is more targeted to programming, so it's much more efficient in terms of programming. It, it can compute the result much faster. And then if necessary, you can also backtrack with GP to find other um, results, but it wasn't designed to actually interact with the derivation tree. Okay, and now to conclude, um, yes, yeah, so we had in mind uh, when we started applications which were more in terms of modeling computation or logics, um, but we realized when we were developing this that there were many interesting domains for which it would be useful to have some mechanism to, to simulate and to, and to interact with the rewriting strategy. Um, we developed ourselves some of these applications with help from domain experts. And what we are trying to, to include now is more, more tools and more features to help analyze the system. So right now we have a very basic type system for the graphs and a basic form of static analysis. So Bruno mentioned that, for example, we can identify if there are different derivations in the tree that um, lead to the same or to isomorphic states, we can, we can do that. But there is much more we would like to do. We would like to include some kind of um, logic uh, language so that we can identify states that satisfy particular properties. Um, and perhaps also think about building domain specific versions. So we started, for example, building one specifically for database uh, applications. <laughs> There might be other domains where we also might want to define domain specific versions. And I think that was all. Um, that's the, the Porgy website where you will find references to all these papers that I mentioned. There's, there's papers about the foundations of, um, so papers on strategic for graph rewriting, papers on the visual side of Porgy. You, you also find there uh, links to download Porgy if you want to play with it yourself. Um, and that I think that was all. Um, if you have any questions, we will be very happy to try to answer them. Thank you uh, very, very much, uh, Maribel. Um, and thanks for me also for the demo. Uh, there's been a couple of questions during your talk, but uh, I think most of them have been uh, answered uh, after they were raised. I think one was not really answered, or at least uh, I'm, I'm seconding the question by a, a Raiko Heckel, uh, is asking whether the rule uh, uh, are partial morphisms between uh, uh, nodes or between ports. It's not it's clear between from... Ports. Between ports, yeah. It's between ports. Okay. And, uh, and uh, what kind of uh, rewriting techniques are you using? Is single push out? Yes, it's single push out. Actually, it's a little bit more. It's single push out when, maybe I can go back to the rule. It's single push out for the simple rules. For some reason is um, So, this will, I'm not showing the red edges, but you know, I mentioned the red edges between ports in the left and the right. Those that we call bridges are actually more general than the single push out because we could, for example, link more than one node. So I could say that this port OB in the node A maps to this port here and also, for example, to this port here. So that's not really a morphism. It's one that goes to two. If we do that, Porgy can, can cope with that. And what it does is that all the, node, all the edges that come to this port 
are duplicated. One copy is redirected here mm -hmm. and the other copy mm -hmm. here. So that's what I'm saying is, is a little bit more than what the single push out does. But if we just put simple bridges, so we map one port from the left to one port on the right, that, that does the single push out rewriting. Mm -hmm. So we call those rules simple rules. So the simple rules that have simple bridges, those are the single push out, but there are some other kinds of rules that do not correspond to single push out. So I, I think in this more complex case, you're looking at a form of NLP, isn't it? Note label controlled rewriting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. With some, some at least in, in terms of expressiveness, it looks similar. Yes. Um, mm. I was also, uh, I forgot now the name of the push out that allows you to clone. So the, yeah, people, yeah, I think yeah. Rashid, Rashid and his co-authors. There's a Sesqui push out, push -out approach, for example, exactly. which, which yeah. does something similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So so that, that one would allow to clone also ports and, and clone the edges. Um, we also have another kind of ports in the arrow node that are even more complicated to, to give a, a proper semantics. So the wire ones that we use for interaction nets that allow us to um, put wires from outside the context, but maybe those, uh, yeah, I left them out because uh, they are for specific uh, kinds of applications. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so we will continue the discussion uh, uh, after we stop the YouTube uh, stream.